Good morning. How's everybody doing? Hardy and I are out for our walk this morning and I'm getting ready to head to the gym. And I'm coming on with a very simple message. Yesterday, I woke up and I was just feeling very discouraged yesterday. I was feeling um, very discouraged. No other way to say it. Um, I got my coffee, I prayed, I read, still not feeling like myself. And for the first time, I did something I have never done. I actually reached out to my inner circle of leadership, my certified master abundant life coaches, and I put a prayer request for myself inside of our, our leadership chat. And I sent a message to my support team for Love Out Loud and I said, prayer request for me this morning for me I'm always praying for everyone else I'm always coaching supporting mentoring leading everyone else and I never ever ask for prayer for myself and later on that day as I was feeling better I was chatting with Clarissa you guys know my CEO sister bestie and and I said you know, when you find yourself doing new things is when new doors are opening, right? When you find yourself doing new things, get prepared for new doors, new opportunities, new seasons in your life. When you find yourself doing things you've never done before, never ever, that is the place of miracles. That is the place of new beginnings. That is the place. So I'm coming on this morning that old ways won't open new doors. Old ways won't open new doors. I sent a message out to my newsletter, my email list this morning, and I posted it on threads and here on Instagram. And I said, you know, sometimes we can be so frustrated with where we're at. And especially if what you've been doing and, and it worked so well before, but it's not working now. It's no longer working. So guess what? The, what you used to do for money, it, it's just not working. The job that was a blessing, it's not a blessing anymore. You're frustrated. The friendships that used to be so close and just like family have somehow not, they're, they're not as close. They're not as connected. They seem to be dying a slow death. The, you know, so much of what we go through in life is transitions and change. Change is a permanent part of life. Change is inevitable. And the way the human mind, the human psychology, human ego works is that we don't like change. We want things to always stay the same. We don't like change. And so we resist change. We resist what God will be doing in your new season. You're resisting it because you want things to stay the same. But simultaneously, you're praying for greater and praying for more. And you're asking for new beginnings and you're asking for breakthrough. And you're asking to be married and you're asking to lose weight and you're asking to have more money. And you're asking for new connections and friendships. You're asking for healing. You're asking for all of these amazing new things to come into your life. However, the only joy 512 going through change now, right? None of those things can come if things don't change. If nothing changes, if nothing changes, none of the stuff you're praying for and asking for can manifest. None of it if nothing changes. Stop and really think about that for a minute. Old ways won't open new doors. If nothing changes, 
about you, your mindset, your habits, your choices, right? In other words, what you get up and do every single day. Whatever you do every day is what's creating your life. The choices you make every day, the thoughts you hold every day, the words that come out of your mouth every day, where you go every day, the people, places, things, and habits are what create and manifest and visualize and materialize in the material world on this earthly realm. So guess what? You want some new stuff? About three, four years ago, I began to pray for a life of ease and flow. Those are the words. That's the phrase I use. You guys who follow me for a while, you know. I've prayed for ease and flow. God, I'm tired. I want some ease and flow. I want a life of ease and flow. And I began to manifest that and just really double down on that in my life. Well, what I didn't realize that I was praying for was for God to come in and shake up the very foundation of my life and all of my workaholic habits, all of the principles that were my claim to fame. I didn't realize I was asking God to shake the very foundation of my identity and who I think I am or who I thought I was by asking for ease and flow. Ease and flow means I depend more on my husband and he makes more money and he pays more of the bills and ease and flow means I have to heal being a workaholic and all the financial trauma and the financial stress and all of the PTSD from financial loss over the years of being an entrepreneur. I had to heal that to come into ease and flow. You mean I had to stop being an enabler and I had to heal these enabling ways and passive aggressive ways and I had to heal from overdoing for people and overcompensating and I had to stop being a rescuer and I had to because if now I'm saying I want balance and harmony I want a softer life I'm going to do a video on a softer life I don't think it's realistic for everybody to have a soft life but I think it is realistic for us to have softer lives and it starts with us saying we want a little more balance we want a little more Harmony, balance, peace, love, along with the work, along with the results of we want abundant life, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to have abundance, prosperity at the sacrifice of peace and love. Stop it, Hardy. My talk is doing the most. So guess what? Some things have to change. And I didn't realize how much had to change. I'm, of course, because when we pray prayers, we see it happening in our own mind a certain way. Oh, it's going to be more passive income. It's going to be my courses and books selling from ads. It's going to be from me being on television. And now all these money, this, these checks and contracts come in. And it's just going to be more ease and flow with passive income. And I'm just going to be watching the money roll in every morning and I don't have to work so hard for it. In praying that prayer, I never asked in my mind for my husband to take over more and take care of us. I never asked for that. I never asked for more independence from my grown children and for them to be more independent and for them to be actually doing for themselves. I never asked to then hold my ex is more accountable to do more for my sons. You mean I'm not going to pay college tuition every semester just because I got it like that? And yeah, your dad need to do more because mom's just going to stop taking care of everything and everybody just because I got it? You mean I got to stop being Miss Moneybags? Mama Dukes? Just because I got it? You mean this is called boundaries and self-love 
You mean this is what godly love looks like? It's not about sacrificing yourself and doing the absolute most for everybody while you keep working so hard that you're creating ease for everyone else but not yourself? That's what this means? Oh, it means I gotta heal some of this mindset and issues and stuff in my own heart and mind that are were handed down to me by a mother who was simultaneously a first lady and loving and kind but a super enabler and would cook, clean, support, do everything for everybody but not ask for anything in return? You mean I had to heal that crap? Oh man, this is hard. You mean ease and flow means going into ministry? What? Now, God, wait a minute. Ease and flow for me means my greater identity around ministry? Oh, what? Now, wait a minute, God. Now, you taking this too far. You taking this. I, I prayed for ease and flow, but you taking this too far. Wait a minute. I, now, I, whoa, I didn't ask for that. And then here comes love out loud. Right? Here comes God's version for me of ministry. And it's like, uh, what, what? That's what we're doing? Okay, I ask for ease and flow. This feels, I know it's from God. I know that I'm following God. This is a new season. Oh my God. Okay, I'm coming a little bit more away from business and definitely coming away from grinding and wow okay this is what we're doing this is part of my ease and flow okay i asked for this don't forget that you asked for this you asked for change you asked for your next level you asked for growth you asked for abundance you asked for prosperity you asked for love when that relationship comes and now the love and everything you've asked for in this partner is now challenging you challenge wait i know i asked for a man that a life partner and a purpose partner and i know i asked for all this but damn does that mean i have to walk in my purpose to have my purpose partner does that mean i have to become more loving and learn how to be a life partner to have this person does that mean he's challenging me in every way possible because god i know you brought him and i know this is of you and now I have to heal and I've got to address my attitude, my energy, my mindset, my ways, everything that has held back love and prosperity up to this point. And now I ask for this and now it's here and now I got to do my part because I have to be obedient to Holy Spirit because now I'm accountable and I have to be responsible for doing my part because I asked for this blessing and now I've got to honor the blessing. Ooh, God, I didn't know that I was praying for all that when I just prayed to be a wife. I didn't know that I was praying for all that when I prayed to be a husband. When you get that godly woman and that wonderful woman, men, and, and oh, God, and now she's holding me accountable for all my ways that need to change so I can really be the man that God's called me to be to fulfill my potential. And she's my purpose partner, and she loves me, and she really wants the best for me, and I know she loves me, but why is this so challenging, and why is she just so challenging? Challenging to me that I have to step up my ways and let go of old foolishness and childishness and selfishness and why do oh this is oh God I love her to pieces and she's such a blessing she's such an angel but good God I didn't know that this is what a wife looked like I didn't know that this is what came with being a husband and a leader and a father and man this is hard this is so hard but people stopping and staring at me guys because i'm talking on the camera i don't know what they're doing gotta watch out you know gotta be aware of my surroundings right anyway old ways won't open new doors 
So as we pray these prayers, and I'm sharing my life because I'm keeping it 100 with y'all. God leading me more into ministry, love out loud, donations and members and, and all. That's a whole different type of platform than business. And I'm like, I know how to sell stuff. I know how to do business. I understand marketing. I teach branding and marketing for a living. I understand business. I understand entrepreneurship. I understand enterprise. I understand the marketplace. I understand put, putting high value products and services into the market to sell it but this whole thing about ask god asking for donations and asking people to give because it's worthy and it's a good cause and because we're making a change in the world and we're helping people and just well i don't even know what to do with this how's that work <laughs> okay god i trust you you're leading me to do it we're gonna do this and then God spoke to me yesterday and showed me it was that to the night before last not yesterday night before God spoke to me as I was going to sleep and showed gave me a message about how the same confidence and boldness that I've gone out into the world with business the same confidence and boldness that I've gone into the world with business, I've got to apply to Love Out Loud. And I was like, oh snap. So you're saying, go after Love Out Loud the same way I've done with business, the same way I've done with marketing and branding and entrepreneurship and coaching. Go after Love Out Loud and apply all of that risk and, and push and courage and boldness to Love Out Loud, whoa. That's why you chose me for it. You know my energy. You know my spirit. You know my courage. You know my boldness. You know what? You know how I approach anything. Oh, wow. Okay, I get it. Look, I'm trying not to walk too far away because my doggy poo pooed down here, and I gotta pick it up before I go back in the house. I love you guys. I love you. Love you. Love you. Old ways won't open new doors. It's time for a shift. It's time for a change. What are you asking God for, but yet you're resisting the change? That's my question today. What are you asking God for, but yet resisting the change? All right? Make sure you go and make a donation to join Love Out Loud. We are moving forward. Atlanta launches Saturday. Cleveland is coming in August. We are launching, launching, launching and growing this movement. Please make a donation. We're starting a membership soon. God is beginning to give me the ideas around what membership for Love Out Loud would look like. So we'll be taking members. But for now, all your donations, all your gifts, all your tithes and offerings that you're sowing into Love Out Loud, we appreciate you so much. All right. I love you guys. Love and life. Blessings in abundance. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.